Hello and welcome to the Regis School Sick Form. My name is Mrs James and I'm the Head of Sick Form at the Regis School. Firstly, I'd like to share um, how lucky I am in the role that I have been in for the last five years. And that's because I really do feel that this stage of a student's educational journey is by far the most exciting as they move into the next stage of education when they leave us. And we are lucky enough to work with our students throughout that process. Now this presentation today um, should build upon the information that we shared with you earlier in the week. I hope that it gives you an insight into the aims of our sick form, but also provides you with some information which will enable you to help your son or daughter through their time in our sick form. Firstly, I'd like to introduce you to our sick form team. I've introduced myself, Mrs James, I am the head of sick form, but I'm also an A-level psychology teacher, an A-level criminology teacher and a physical education teacher. Now on the screen we have Miss van der Ark who teaches maths to all years in the school, but she teaches a lot of our A-level and further mathematicians in our sick form. Her role in the sick form team is the assistant head of sick form and she tends to focus mainly on making sure that our students transition from year 11 into year 12 well. So she'll be keeping a close eye on our year 12 students and making sure that they've settled in well and providing them with any support that they may need in that transition. Also on the screen, we have Mrs Potter. Mrs Potter is our sick form administrator. Your son or daughter will have lots to do with Mrs Potter and particularly as they make their way into year 13 because Mrs Potter is also our university advisor. So she will provide them with lots of one to one support with those applications and help them with their journey into further education beyond our sick form. Also on the screen, we have Mrs Ablett, who is our sick form learning mentor. Mrs Ablett supports our students with the study skills that they need to be successful learners in our sick form. And again, she'll work with them on one to one basis outside of lessons to equip them with the skills that they need. Mrs Ablett also provides one to one support for students that may need some extra support. And she takes on that mentoring role with some of our students. And here on the screen, we have our lovely sick form tutor teams. So there might be some familiar faces because all of these teachers teach at both A level and lower down the school. So we have Mr. Robbins, we have Miss Johns, Mr. Pagavy and Mrs. Matten. Now these are all experienced teachers who have worked lots with sick form students. So they'll be delivering our tutor program in the tutor sessions in the mornings, but they're also there to provide support for students at any time throughout the school day. They don't necessarily need to be your first point of contact, but we do encourage this as a tutor, but we're always happy for you to come directly to the sick form team too, if you have any worries or concerns or simply just need some questions answered. So we do encourage lots of communication with any one of our sick form team, because we're here to help and support both you and your son and daughter in our sick form. So here in our sick form, we have three main aims and I feel really passionately about our aims in the sick form. The first aim is that we want all of our students to achieve their full academic potential. And we hope that they came to our sick form because they want to do this too. Because actually that leads nicely onto our second aim is that we want to support students by securing a place at their first choice university or apprenticeship. And those two go hand in hand together because ultimately we are here to make sure that all of the students in our sixth form achieve well in their academic subjects and move on to their first choice placements when they leave us. Finally, I want our students to enjoy their time in our sixth form and I'm really excited about this year where we can start to do some things that we haven't been able to do over the past 18 months, including trips to universities and university fairs, but also getting in local businesses that provide apprenticeships that may really appeal to some of our students. So this is our aim in our sixth form and like I've said, we are absolutely devoted to this. And the general feel that I've got from the first week back is that our students absolutely want the same thing. And I'm really excited to go on that journey with them over the next two years. I would like to take this opportunity to share some of the successes of our sixth form students that have just left us. 
This year, our students managed to achieve outcomes that put us once again in the top 10% of the country based on our average A-level outcome score. We also had a number of students that have gone on to some top universities around the country, including a number of Russell Group and Jade Coles, who's gone to study law at the University of Oxford. Now, it's really important that we share this with our current students because we always talk about things like having limitless ambition and setting the bar high and seeing our very own students in the sixth form go on to do such wonderful things is really important to show our students and our current sixth form students that it's absolutely possible and we encourage them to have limitless ambition too. On the next page, I'm just going to show you some of our most successful students and their destinations. And of course, we wish them all the very best on that journey that they're about to go on. One thing I think is really important is that I share with you some of the messages that I have given our Year 12 students this week. And of course, I've shared the successes of our Year 13 students who have just left. And one thing I say to our new Year 12 students is that there was no secret formula for those students' successes. Actually, what they did was make sure they got all the basics right. And when they were doing those things, they were always performing at 100% and encourage them to strive always to be the best they can in everything that they do. Now, like I've said, there's no secret formula. So those students made sure that they had excellent attendance. They were in school every day. They went to all of their lessons and they made sure they worked incredibly hard at all times. They completed all of their work to their best of their ability and they were organised and always met deadlines. They were incredibly disciplined, so they worked hard in their non-contact lessons. You may have seen a student timetable um, that has come home and you will see that they now have non-contact lessons on their timetable. One thing we really encourage our students to do is use that time effectively. Because students will be set a lot of independent study and sixth form is about being independent and that's what those successful students done. They worked hard in lessons but when they had a non-contact they remained focused and completed their independent work during the school day. They would always seek help and ask for support if needed. I really encourage our students to let me know if they are struggling with anything. The jump from GCSE to A-level is huge and it will be one of the biggest jumps that they experience in education. 
So please have conversations with your son and daughter about how they're settling into their new courses. If they have any worries and concerns, please go straight to their teacher. But if they need some confidence to do so, encourage them to speak to their tutors or come and speak to one of the sick form team. And we will happily talk to teachers on behalf of them to make sure they are not struggling. So please get them to ask for help. Those students that were really successful were very good at requesting for extra work and it's been really lovely to see some of our current year 13 students who have come back to of course their examinable year have already started to do that and I have no doubt that our year 12 students as they get their feet and on the ground and they start to really delve into the depths of each subject that they too will be asking for extra work beyond what is done in the classroom, beyond what is set for independent study and I really encourage our students to do that. And the final thing that those successful students did was make sure that they prepared thoroughly for all internal assessments. A levels are taught over two years and the way that our memory works means that it will be incredibly difficult for students to remember stuff that they're doing over the next few weeks at the end of two years if they don't rehearse and go over it. And I'll talk to you a little bit about memory in a moment. But we made sure and those students made sure that they were preparing thoroughly for all the exams that take place throughout the year because that will encourage them to revisit work that they have already done. And I come back to the use of those non-contact lessons. That is the perfect time to do that and we will be encouraging our students to do that themselves. Another thing that I talk lots to our students about is how their memory works. And as an A-level psychology teacher, we do lots of this. And I think it's really important that our students understand this, regardless of which subject they are studying. You can see on the screen here, we have got our forgetting curve. And you can see when students learn new information in a lesson, they're likely to get 100% of that information when they leave because of the quality of our teachers. However, after day one, you can see that that can drop actually to 80%. And without rehearsing that information, that will continue to drop. And sometimes we can lose all the information. Quite often, we will only retain as much as 20% without any rehearsal. Now, the key message I give to our students is that if we do not rehearse, we're only likely to therefore remember 20% of what we've learned in lessons. And there isn't one single A-level that would allow you to gain a grade from only scoring 20% in their final exams. So the reason I share this with the students and why I want to share it is with you is that we should constantly see A-level students rehearsing and going back over the work that they have learned in their lessons. This also gives them an opportunity to notice if there are parts of the content that maybe they didn't fully understand. And again, I encourage our students to go back to the teachers and speak with them to fill any gaps in their knowledge. So we've spoken about what our students did to ensure that they secured some really good grades in our sick form, but I'm also very keen to talk about how we supported them to help them through their time in sick form and help them achieve those grades. So one thing we do is make sure that all of our subjects are delivered by subject specialists and led by subject specialists. So we have a number of very experienced sick form teachers in the building that work with our sick form students. Now those teachers of course set interesting and challenging lessons and they deliver those during the curriculum time. However, those teachers will also be set in detailed independent study for our students. Our policy here in sick form is that we set one hour of independent study for each lesson that they have. And this gives our students the opportunity to embed that knowledge and help our memory retain that information. By also setting independent study, we're guiding students in how to use these non-contact lessons on the timetable. It is of course very different to year 11, where they had five lessons a day and quite often were invited back to success sessions. And for some of our students, these are new skills that they have to learn and time management and self-discipline is really important. So we feel that these independent study sessions where we direct work really supports our students to be able to time manage and um, complete their academic studies outside of the classroom. 
Our teachers will make sure that they mark work promptly and will always provide feedback to our students of how they can improve and we encourage students to be really responsive to that feedback. We also make sure that our students have lots of workspaces. So we have our sick form spaces up on the top floor, which are dedicated just to the sick form students. So students lower down the school are not able to use those spaces. We also have breakout rooms throughout the school where students can work. And hopefully you'll be able to come into our school soon and see our new academic hub, which is where the library used to be which has a really uh, a real feel like a university. It's a really mature workspace that we encourage our sick formers to go to during and after school, but also that will be available to them at weekends from nine till 12 from next week onwards, if they wanted to come in and use that space. We will constantly review their progress and one of my main roles is keeping a really close eye on how our students are working throughout their time with us and whether they are showing the expected progress. If they're not, we are then here to support and that's where Mrs Abler, our sick form learning mentor, will be able to provide some one-to-one -one support for our students that may need it. Just as you would have received lower down in the school, we will constantly provide you with reports that focus predominantly in year 12 on their attitude and effort. But as we move through the year, we will start to include some more grade based reports where you can see how they're working towards their target grades. But a real focus for us at this very first stage is making sure that our students are working at 100% in something that is really controllable, and that is their attitude and their effort to their studies. Now one thing we will also do coming away from our first aim of, of producing academic results is actually moving into our second aim of the sick form which is making sure that our students leave us having secured their first choice university or apprenticeship. And the support we give in our sick form, I believe is brilliant because we will start this process in year 12. We will take our students up to university fairs and universities to visit and help them make informed choices about their futures. And as they move into year 13, they will be provided with hours of one-to-one -one support to make sure that we help them make the correct decisions for them, but also making sure that their applications to their next steps are excellent and show them in the best possible light. Now I'm really dedicated to our students and I hope you can feel from this presentation, although it's more difficult over a screen, that I absolutely love my job, I love my role and I love working with our sixth form students here in this building. But I do ask for your support as well in this process. Please can you make sure and encourage all of our students to attend everything, but also can I ask that if you've got any meetings booked in about the progress of your son and daughter that you try to attend those. Of course, sometimes we're unable to, so regular communication with the school is really encouraged. Please do let us know if there are any worries or concerns. Like I said earlier in this presentation, I'm very happy for you to go directly to our sick form tutors, but if you did want to come directly to the sick form office, that is also encouraged too. The most important thing is that those worries and concerns are shared with us so we can act upon those and get those resolved for you and your son or daughter. Please encourage them to be independent learners. All the work we do, all the work you can do to support will only take them so far. And ultimately, the students I spoke about at the start of this presentation were successful because they were independent. I don't expect all of our students in our sick form to be perfect independent learners. That is a process and it takes time and we're here to support them develop those skills from some of the things that I've spoken about. But by encouraging them at home to just do some revision and work, but also encouraging them to take part in things outside of school, that's excellent. And that really helps with their applications to their next steps. Please speak to them about their lessons and how they're using their non-contact time. Are they coming into school and utilising every second that they have got? Because one thing that I do really encourage our students is to see 
the school day as a bit of a work day. So they arrive at 8.35 in the morning. They may only have two lessons, for example, through the day. So are they using the other two lessons to get their independent work done, any revision done? Because then that actually allows them to leave school and have a break from the academic studies. And that, of course, is really important to them too. Please talk to them about their next steps and what they want to do. We often find that students who have a clear goal and know what they're working towards tend to be more focused in their studies. It gives them direction and it's human nature to enjoy that direction and that goal to aim for. Please can I ask that you monitor the amount of paid work that they are doing outside of school and recognise that working for more than eight hours a week can have a direct impact on the amount of time that they can um, provide to their academic studies. So if I could ask you to monitor that, that would be really helpful for us. So thank you. And please can I ask that where possible, could you try to arrange any appointments and anything that they may need to attend um, outside of their lesson time and particularly I'm talking about driving lessons and things like that and again I would encourage them even if it's a non-contact lesson that that isn't used for a driving lesson that actually the driving lesson is booked after school hours. So moving on to understanding the students' timetables, which can be a little bit confusing at first because it is very different to a year 11 timetable. One thing I want to be really clear about is that all students are expected in for tutor time from Monday to Thursday. So they should be in four days a week for their tutor time. In that tutor time, we cover a whole range of topics, which I'm going to talk to you more about in detail, that are really focused on the age of our students. And these will include things such as applying to universities, jobs and apprenticeships. So the timings of that tutor session is 8.35 till 9 o'clock. So we encourage our students to be on site by half past eight to make sure they get to that tutor session on time. Now, all of our students should have a minimum of three subjects on their timetable. There may be some students that have a fourth because they're completing an EPQ, or there may be some students that have a fourth because they're having to do their English or maths reset. But on the whole, they will study three A-levels. And the reason for that is the three A-levels are what are used to continue into their next steps. You will see that what appear next week is they'll have some independent study sessions. So those independent study sessions have an assigned room and that's where Mrs. Ablett works with our students um, in that session to help them with their study skills. That is a silent session, so it allows students to have time away in a silent space to really focus on completing any of the work that they need to do outside the lesson. But also, whilst they're doing it, having the opportunity to speak to Mrs Ablett for any extra help and support, and she'll be on call in all of those sessions. So our expectations are that students attend all of those sessions and are in the right place at the right time. So they should be, to be clear, they should be in tutor time Monday to Thursdays. They should attend all of their subject lessons and they're expected to attend all of their study periods too. Any non-contacts that they find around those, we encourage them to stay in school and use the sick form areas. Of course, they are able to leave and you would have seen a letter come home, which enables them to have a fob to go in and out of the building. So if they have got that signed, they are of course able to leave and some of them do to go and have a break. They may go to the shop, they may get a drink and then come back into school. But again, we really encourage to try and see the work day um, as half past eight till three o'clock where they stay in school and complete their work. So here on the screen is an example of our tutor time programme for this academic year. You can see on Monday, we have something which we call Mindset Monday, where we support our students with planning their independent study and getting into good habits and good routines. We'll talk them through study skills for A-level in this session, but also something I'd like to draw your attention to is that we share our opportunities bulletin. So every week we share this with the students and in it are lots and lots of opportunities that are offered by local businesses, national businesses, but also lots 
lots of universities. And these are things that our students can engage with beyond their academic studies, and we really encourage them to do so. On Tuesday, we do our PSHCE sessions, which are very specific to sixth form students. And throughout the year, we'll be covering health and wellbeing, relationships, and skills that are needed to live in the wider world, including things like finance and student loans. On Wednesdays, we offer our Futures programme where we really encourage sixth form leadership. Our Year 12 students have already opted into the work that they want to do from September to December. And some of these things include things such as sports leadership, the debate club, peer reading, charity fundraising, and lots of work with students lower down the school in our local community. We offer this because again, we come back to encouraging students to take part in enrichment opportunities beyond their day-to-day -day studies. And I would urge you to please encourage them to do the same. From January onwards, this Futures programme will then start to focus on careers and we will start to introduce them to online platforms that will help them complete searches to look at what they would like to do when they leave our sick form. On a Thursday, on a week A, we have an assembly and on a week B, we'll be doing a session on current affairs and in the news, which again, we feel is really important to help our students understand life beyond our school and sick form studies. Here in our sixth form, we really do encourage students to take part in a wide range of extracurricular activities, and we encourage them to do lots of that outside of school. But there are also a number of opportunities which we encourage them to do in school. And if there's anything on this screen that maybe they're not taking part in that you think they should, please do encourage them to get involved. We have lots of student leadership opportunities in our school and there are some of our year 12 students who are already in positions such as our head students and subject leaders. We also offer sick form sports leadership opportunities, but also some of them have opted in to do our peer reading scheme, where on Wednesday mornings, they're going to be working with some year seven students to take part in some peer reading. Now, of course, our year, student, year seven students are going to gain a huge amount from this, but I also hope that our year 12 students will gain just as much from it. And it also looks fantastic when they apply to positions outside of school for jobs and universities. We also have a charity fundraising lead um, and we hope that they're going to be providing lots of opportunities, fun and social opportunities for our sick formers to get involved in. As I have mentioned, we will share weekly with them via their emails the Sick Form Opportunities Bulletin. This goes out every Friday and we pick it up on the following Monday in tutor time and will direct our students to things that may be of interest. Because sometimes we are aware students may need a little nudge about the confidence to apply to some of those things. We will be taking part in lots of trips, hopefully again. We do take our students up to London, to the Emirates, to visit a university fair, but we also do trips to the University of Southampton. We have been to the University of Bath. We hope to go to the University of Sussex too, so we can expose our students to where they may be going next and what that feels like, what it looks like, and to have the opportunity to interact with academics and other university students to ask questions um, and find out more about their options when they leave our sick form. We offer sports teams and we do regular events, both in school, quite often year 12 versus year 13, but we are also now able to have fixtures against other school and we often compete in county leagues um, with other schools in our areas. We look forward to offering some of our charity events, which will be run by our students. In the past, we've had things like quiz nights and fancy dress days, but also it was fantastic to be able to run our summer ball last year. And I really hope that our current year 12 students are already looking forward to next summer where we can have that summer ball again. Now quickly, I just wanted to speak to you about sick form books and resources and to reassure you that our school holds all the main textbooks that are needed 
for our students on the A-level subjects. Some of the A-level books can be quite expensive and we don't expect the students to buy those and instead we just have a deposit system here where the students can put a deposit on a book. They can use that book for the two years with us and as long as they return it at the end, we give that deposit back. However, we are aware that some students like to buy their own books because they like to write in them and stick things in them. If that is the case, I please can I encourage you to make sure that you check with your teachers that it is the correct book. Of course, it needs to be on the right specification, but there are a number of different books for a number of different subjects. And our teachers are very aware of the best books that, find, that our students find the most beneficial. So please do check in. Our sixth form study areas also hold copies of all those books and students are welcome to use those during the school day as long as they return them back to our sixth form areas. I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about the sixth form bursary and this is a government scheme that students who are aged between 16 and to 19 are potentially entitled to. So I would encourage you to have a look to see if your son and daughter qualifies for the sixth form bursary. And at the bottom of this page, I have put a link to the 16 to 19 bursary fund. Alternatively, if you just type into Google the 16 to 19 bursary, it will direct you to the government page. Now, if students are entitled to the bursary, they will be given £200 each term to support them with things like books and clothing for their academic studies. It can also be used for transport and it can also be used for lunch. What we will also do is any students that qualify for the bursary, we will make sure that all their books are bought for them so they don't have to borrow the school's book and we will be able to get them a laptop to support with their studies. So I do encourage all of you to have a look to see if you qualify for that bursary and encourage you to apply. Now, all you would need to do is to come and see the sick form office and in particular, Mrs. Potter. So please either send an email directly to Mrs. Potter, in which case she can organise a meeting with your son and daughter to give the paperwork or send the paperwork directly to you, or just ask your son and daughter to pop in and see Mrs. Potter and she will give them everything that they need to bring home for you to apply for that bursary. So I hope our welcome to sick form booklet that was shared earlier this week, coupled with this recording, has answered any questions that you may have about the start of term and the transition from year 11 into year 12. However, if you do have any further questions, please do get in touch with myself or any one of our sick form team and we'll be very happy to help. I'd like to leave you with the quote that's on the screen, which is quite good is our enemy. And that is something I've shared with all of our year 12 and year 13 students, because what I want our students to strive to be is 100%, 100% of the time. And that is looking at everything they do in the sick form and questioning, is that quite good or could it be even better? And when our students do that, that's when we see them performing at their highest levels and being the most proud of the work that they produce. So I'll leave you with that. I ask that you share those messages with the students too, because I love nothing more than seeing our students leave us on results day in year 13, having secured the best possible outcomes that they can, that they are so proud of, and we are proud of, but also going on to their first choice destinations. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I look forward to working with you all over the next two years. Take care and goodbye.